These are the Perlison S5Ms. These are the first THX Dominus speakers that you can get. It'll fill a space that's, what, I, what is it? If I don't know what it is, but I think it's 6,500 cubic feet of space at something like 120 dB of SPL. So if you got a gigundus home theater, living room, whatever, these guys are gonna fill that space with like no issues whatsoever. Actually, while going through the manual, the S5M is Dominus certified as a surround speaker, but ultra certified if you wanna use it as an LCR. So it is a step below the Dominus certification if you wanna use it as your front speakers. But in the box, we get, we get some, I think these little bumpers, little foam bumpers, some white gloves, keep your fingerprints off of the speakers, some documentation here. These are, this must be a ported speaker because this looks like a little port plug. Let's take this out the box. This, I believe weight wise is something like 42 pounds. Keep the fingerprints off of it. We're gonna do this uh, OJ style. Oh, look at that. That's nice. That's real nice. First off, let's take a quick look at the back. This is the rear of the speaker. You can see there's inserts here for a dedicated wall mount. I'll show a picture on the screen, but you can get a, a dedicated wall mount here if you wanted to pick up the mount, which will allow you to mount this, mount this to the wall and you can swivel it around if you wanted to go that route instead of going the, uh, the speaker, instead of the speaker stand mount. But here, this is a, a bi-wireable speaker. These are rhodium plated. But on the front here, we get dual seven inch drivers. And in the center portion here, we've got three drivers. We've got a one inch beryllium dome tweeter and these one inch drivers here, which handle the mid range. I think the frequency response 80 to 20 K as well for a bass response. I think the inner room response is something like 39 Hertz. As we were looking closer at the speaker, we found that if you remove the bottom plate by pulling out the screws, you'll find the port hiding under here. This is a very interesting placement for it. Now you can just stick the foam plug right in there. Size wise, this is 23 and a half inches tall by nine and a half inches wide by 15 and a half inches deep. But this is it. This might be legit end game status home theater speakers. We're gonna hook this up on the two channel system. We're gonna give you some thoughts and impressions there. Welcome back to another two channel review over here on Spare Change, starring Bill. What's up? So for the associated gear that we're using for these speakers, they're gonna be powered by the Parasound JC5 two channel amplifier paired up with the Cambridge Audio NQ preamp. We'll be using a Node 2i streamer with Rune and the cables are AudioQuest William Tell by wire cables. First off, these speakers are THX Dominus certified. You might not think THX associated with audiophile-esque speakers. Well, I think you might be mistaken on this one. Yeah, you would definitely be wrong on that assumption. This is, uh, these are quite nice audiophile speakers. Now, I do think these are aimed towards home theater because you can get a matching center channel, matching surround speakers, matching subwoofer. But for this video, we're only gonna be using this for two channel. Bill, give me your thoughts <laughs> on the audio quality. These things were phenomenal. They're basically, what do you call them, monitors, mm -hmm. right? So they're like a mini tower. We compared them to the Bowers & Wilkins D4805s, just to have you know a frame of reference. They're not exactly the same speaker or the same price point. We're talking about you know Bowers or the bookshelf 805s versus these monitors. Sound quality was fantastic. You know, you can, as far as, you know, if these were gonna be really good audiophile type speakers, you're putting them up against a really, really nice audiophile speaker in the Bowers. So I think they, uh, they did very well. I actually preferred those for a lot of the stuff we listened to. They had a, let's say, very true sound. Their presence was amazing, uh, especially when the, uh, we did a live Cowboy Junkies, live Trinity sessions with Sweet Jane, and those speakers killed it. Yeah, so for the music listening, we did use Cobuzz along with Ruin and Tidal. And yeah, just as Bill was saying, these are a very, I guess, true sounding speaker. They're also what I would say is very neutral sounding speakers. Mm. So very, 
they, they don't kind of edge in one way or the other. There's, I don't feel there's a bump in the bass or a bump in the treble department, just very kind of flat sounding. Yeah, I, it's a, it's a, a nice size cabinet. You've, you're talking about two, what are those, six inch, six and a half inch? Two six and a half inch woofers, yeah. Woofers, uh, two mid-range drivers and a century located beryllium tweeter. But I think those beryllium tweeters do a really nice job. The highs sound excellent without being, uh, without being brash. Which brings us to the Focal Kenta number threes. <laughs> now, in comparison to those, I mean, those things were just piercing yeah. in comparison. Yeah, anything real high, especially that uh, Sympathy for the Devil, uh, it just made your ears bleed. I would say these are more in line with the Focal Sopras rather than Kenta threes. Mm -hmm. But since we're not, we don't have the Sopras on hand, we did compare them to the 805D4s. And, you know, I think we both kind of agreed that, that the Perlissons were maybe on certain songs, maybe slightly brighter, especially with uh, the Rolling Stone song. Yeah. There's that guitar solo that about three minutes in that, not that these are really harsh in any way, because they're not. No. Uh, but they are a little bit brighter on that particular song over the 805s. And I think uh, I, I would say that the 805s have a slight slight smoothness to its top end compared mm. to these ones. Yeah, I, I one thing I noticed about the 805s when we listened to this Sympathy for the Devil is it's such a bright guitar solo that a lot of times you don't even you don't really hear the fact that it's fuzzed. There's a bit of distortion pedal going on there that when I heard it with the 805s, I was like, oh wow, that's like that distortion sound really nice. It was just enough. It wasn't too you know overpowering. A lot of times you're just dealing with God, turn it down. I would say it's a, maybe a little bit brighter. Again, a little bit brighter than the 805s, but still not not something that I was like, turn it down immediately because it's too bright. So for that particular song, for Sympathy for the Devil, I actually preferred the 805s over the Prolissons. For the Cowboy Junkies song, the Prolissons were, it just, they're such a much bigger speaker that, you know, the comparison wasn't really fair in terms of, they produce a lot bigger sound, a bigger sound stage. The bass is phenomenal in those things. I mean, if you just had two of those, I mean, you could run a sub if you wanted to, but you probably wouldn't find it necessary unless you really, really like a lot of heavy bass. After we did our, you know, our bass comparison, while we were setting up, I just threw on some Led Zeppelin on those Perlissons. And man, if you like your Zeppelin, those speakers just kill it. I think that extra extension, the bottom end extension, gives the speaker a much wider, bigger soundstage, bigger presence over the Bowers, obviously, because it's a smaller cabinet. But that, that extra bass, man, wow. I mean, you can use this in ported or sealed. I believe if you use it sealed, then that puts it into THX certified mode. So that might be useful for home theater applications. But for music, we preferred it ported mm -hmm. for that extra bass, for the extra slam. Everything from like mid-range all the way down to the lowest. Very well balanced. The speaker is really precise. It's not sloppy at all. The bass is very punchy. Um, sometimes, you know, get these speakers with those with the ports. You know, we, we listen to it, you know, we want to get that extra bass so we didn't have it ported, but really just really tight, really tight. And that, I think, what I like about the design of the speaker is the placement of the two mids those two mid drivers are actually on the same sort of face plate, and then the, the tweeter is placed directly between them. And, and with those two sub drivers on the, you know, on the on the outsides, I think that really kind of balances the sound very nicely. As far as imaging and sound stage, this has a very wide horizontal dispersion, much wider than the Bowers and uh, Wilkins 805s, which I felt were a little bit more intimate sounding. So this, I think, due to the waveguide, the way the, sh the waveguide is shaped, we're getting a nice wide up front. Also found certain songs that was a little bit more forward sounding, especially with the Dominique song. Because mm -hmm. I, I know I've heard that song many times where she was a little bit laid back behind the speaker song, but this one she was definitely more forward. Oh yeah, absolutely. She was right in your face. The uh, like, if you were to think about it in terms of visual, if you heard the rest of the band, you'd have to sort of see them in the back, you know. And then as soon as she, you know she was singing, it was like it cut right to a headshot, and she's right there in your face. I mean, it was actually pretty cool and you know I it was the first thing that immediately came to me but I think for a home theater speaker you know if that's what it's categorized at this is a hundred percent legit audiophile-esque two-channel beast of a speaker oh, absolutely well-rounded everything from the bottom mid-range phenomenal dialogue was phenomenal the high end excellent sounding wasn't bright wasn't harsh I do think it's missing the very little tiny bit more micro details than some other speakers that we've heard but I mean, overall though, I think if you're looking for a home theater speaker, I mean, for a <laughs> hi-fi speaker, then look no further, man. One of the things as far as micro detail um, and, and spatial imaging is concerned, one of the best songs 
that, that we use is that, um, that Cowboy Junkies, Trinity Sessions Live, that Sweet Jane. That, that whole album was recorded in one day and they used like one stereo area mic. So they were all arrayed around the mic playing. It wasn't like every, you know, the drums weren't just individually mic'd up, the amps weren't mic'd up, they play with one mic. If you wanna really see how things sound, like where things are located, that's a great song to do it and you're, you know, see how well your speakers and your processor represent that. All right, so this is the two channel review. If you guys are interested in the home theater review, I'll be covering that in a few more weeks once I get the subwoofers and the center channel. But as of today, at the time of this video, each one of these speakers is $6,500 each for a total of 13 Gs. The thing is, they're very functional. You know, if you want to listen to just music, they're going to be like, get you right where you need to be. Fantastic sounding. But then again, if you want to use them for your home theater, you can, you know, they're much more functional. You don't have to have a whole set of different speakers for this versus that, you know, which is most systems, most people with, who like high-end audio don't want to use the same speakers they're using for their home theater because let's be honest they don't usually sound as good this is a jack of all trades type of speaker and it's a damn good speaker amazing speaker yeah two thumbs up deuce certified buy it there you go if you have the funds if you have the funds <laughs> <laughs> but anyways guys that's our thoughts on the perlison s5m speakers have you guys heard them and what'd you think about the sound quality leave a comment down below and let us know as always guys thanks for watching be sure to like share and subscribe and we will see you again in the next video Deuces.